the media business, a perception of glamour and fame. However, this is a very regulated industry here in Asia. But we speak to one man who makes it work. Today, we talk to CEO and founder of BFM Radio, Mr. Mali Ali. I'm Ben Ibrahim and this is Entrepreneur. Hey, Mali. Hi, Ben. How, How are you? Hi, Hi. welcome Hello. to BFM. Thanks very much. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks for having me. Grab a chair. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. So, how's things in uh, the radio Good. business? Yeah, uh, interesting. Uh, you know, very, um, I guess, very uh, fast moving. It's yeah. quite quick. But things are settling down in terms of operations and on. Okay. We're, we're getting things a bit right now. Okay. Yeah. Well, the first question I have for you, and yep. thanks for spending some time with us. Welcome. Please tell us a bit about your family background. Well, I guess, um, yeah, quite a large family, I guess. Um, quite a typical story, you know. Um, my father <coughs> married thrice. Um, I'm from the second wife. Um, my mother married twice and as well, you know. So um, it's quite a, as you can imagine, quite an interesting yeah. family, family thing. So, um, and I have about six siblings from all this sort of four marriages, I guess, um, you know. And, uh, and, um, and, but interestingly enough, it was quite a lonely childhood because, you know, from um, children from the first, from family from the first wife, all have grown up, went on to university or college, or whatever it is. So I grew up pretty much, um, pretty much um, uh, as a as an only child for right. a long time. Uh, did your family instill any work ethic into you, or is that something that you found yourself? It's it's yeah, I think it's weird. I think some people said that. Um, my, uh, my, I remember my father was traveling a lot. Mm -hmm. um, pretty much left me to my own devices. Mm -hmm. um, but there was a I don't know. My, it, it was a natural instinct just to. I remember getting textbooks from school. Um, on the first day of term and piling through them in the first day and finishing them, writing all the exercises and all that. And there was time to play. So, I mean, that was, um, um, I, uh, so it was it's a, it's an odd thing. There was really no, um, yeah, there's some discipline by my stepmother uh, in terms of just like, you know, don't, you know, don't, cat, don't cut the cat's whiskers off, things like that. Don't iron your own clothes and burn a hole in your shorts, <laughs> those kind of things. Right? Was it true as a child you loved media? No, as a child. Media only came, um, I guess, when at university level, um, when one uh, when I went to the UK and suddenly realised this this great radio. Mm -hmm. Having said that, I used to remember um, uh, at the age of probably eight or nine. I, those days, I remember FM FM radio was like only started at about two in the afternoon. Uh, it was a test transmission at two o'clock in the afternoon until about five or something. I can't remember the exact time, but I remember going over and saying, "Hey, guys, they have really good music on this FM station." Most of the stations at the time were AM stations. But there was that was part of many things that I did. So, but that was one of the yeah one of the things that my first introduction to radio, so to speak. Never ever ever thought that he would be in uh, the business that he is right now. I mean, after university, he did law at university, right? I mean, thought, okay, I've been a boring uh, lawyer. He will become a lawyer for the rest of his life, but. Uh, we then we found a different side of Malik, and this was the Malik that was uh, jumping all around. <laughs> you know, he did he did the law, then he did his uh, MBA, then he did uh, some consultancy, and then he worked for a few corporate companies, and um, and finally, I, I, I guess he just found his true calling in life, which was to be really an entrepreneur. On to academic pursuits. You, I mean, you're a very intelligent guy. But why the LLB? Why law? Well, law um, actually is to improve my English. Right? My, uh, I had. Um, I mean, first I guess I was, I was doing it vicariously for my father. He was. Uh, he wanted to be a judge, but but the um, the Brits um, when they asked him why do you want to be, why do you want to do, he he wanted he, he applied for a scholarship to do, uh, to do law in England, um, and they asked him why. Um, you know why? Um, why you want to do law, Mr. Ali? And he said, uh, "Well, I want to seek independence for my country." You know, so he says, "Mr. Ali, there's the door, right?" So in a way, you know, in a way, it was kind of like um, him vicari vicariously sort of going through me and saying, "Right, well, why did you do law? It's a good start." Mm -hmm. And it worked well for me as well. So I think that really helped. And I thought, "Well, this is great," and it was pretty interesting. I mean, criminal law is the most interesting thing mm -hmm. to learn. Contractual mm -hmm. law, probably not. Now, at university, yeah. you love criminal law. The interest for media. Yeah. Where's the connection? 
Um, I think you, you are, I mean, you know, it's, we don't live in silos and things like that. You have lots of different interests. I mean, whilst one is pursuing, you know, re great cases on law, you also, um, there was a time in, in London where, um, you know, you heard people like Chris Tarrant on The Breakfast Show on Capital Radio. Um, and, you know, when you listen to, you know, you are open to all kinds of influences, you know, be it culture, be it, um, be it academic and all that. So radio was part of that cultural influence that, that I sort of thought, my gosh, this is fantastic. This is something that made me wake up in the morning, that made me laugh uh, a lot, you know, and uh, a huge emotion. always uh, had a vision of what he wanted to achieve which is probably says a lot more than the rest of us yeah. because the rest of us just take the really safe and boring route and you know you get have a career and you, you step up and, and you go up but um, he just went for what he what 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 he believed in you know what his dream was and basically he's living his dream um, which is probably more than what you can say for a lot of people right now from business school, you went to consulting, mm -hmm. and then you went to uh, mobile marketing. Mm -hmm. Tell us about your time there and what you learned yeah. and how you applied it to the BFM business. Okay, um, consulting, I guess, um, you know, um, consulting is always about finding out what the client problems are, um, where they are, uh, analyzing those problems. But first, the critical thing is what is the biggest issue hitting the mind of uh, uh, the person who, who needs consultation, right? Uh, the client. What is what is their biggest bugbear? What is their biggest issue? In? And guess what? That's exactly the same question I ask of BFM uh, uh, clients. What is your biggest issue right now? Um, I don't ask. You know, what's your advertising campaign? What's your you know, what's your campaign for? What's your budget? This and no, what's your numbers? What's yeah. your number? I, I don't need those things. What I need to find out is essentially what. You know, I'm talking to you now as a consultant. I'm talking to you as someone who's trying to be part of your solution. Um, tell me what's your, you know, what keeps you up awake at night as a business person, as a client. And I think that that line of inquiry um, is something which bodes well for all um, all areas. You know, if you have that genuine interest in solving the client's issue, mm -hmm. I think you know, um, I think you're halfway there in terms of, you know, yeah. and and you know, and part of the solution might not be what I'm offering. It might not be BFM. No problem. It's okay.